like to welcome the Miller and also the Colonel uh, family here for the baptism of their pack of their children, and we are God blessing upon them as we not only deliver the word but before them an example of faith. But we don't want to miss the occasion today that we wish our wonderful vocalist a birthday because today is her birthday. Shall I tell them? Oh, okay. uh, I'm not going to go there. Happy birthday, Anita, and thank God for you for all that you do for our family. I'm sorry, Paul, but she told me to tell to say so. <laughs> Today, as we know, uh, we come together again for another evaluation. Jesus today said to us, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who was digging in a field. All of a sudden, he discovered a box or a treasure there. He hid it again, go to the man and said, listen, I am very in love with your field. Can I buy it? And he buy this field. And by that issue, he also buy the treasure within it. The kingdom of God is like a merchant looking for a fine beer. Yeah. And when he find one, he sell everything to buy it. The kingdom of God is like a net thrown into the sea that collect all kinds of things. And when they hold it, they separate the good and they put them in bucket, the fish, and those things that they, that they, write, that they like to, and the rest they throw them away. My dear people, the kingdom of God is each one of us. We are part of that kingdom. And who is the one? Who is the wise one? The wise one is a person who really understands that for this kingdom, nothing can be compared to. And in order to understand this reading, which is the gospel, we have to go to the first reading today. The first reading is a young Solomon. By right, Solomon not supposed to be successor to his father David. There was another boy born from Micah. And uh, the, mother, the, the mother of Solomon asked David to promise her before he died in front of all the counselors that her son Solomon will sit on the throne of the, uh, the, uh, the throne of Jerusalem, on the throne of Judah. And we know that he promised and actually he become. Now remember, Solomon is on the eve of installation. And he said, I need prayers. I need assistance. And so he went to God and said, Lord, I ask you to give me the courage and the wisdom to really rule these 800,000 people. I don't know how to do it. My father has experience, but now they throw me into this job and I need you more than any, anything else in life. And the Lord said to him, because you didn't ask something for yourself to reign 40 years like your father, to give you money and wealth because you have it. Your father has put everything in the, in the barns there. There was lots of goodies, lots of things that he bought for him. He bought gold from Ephraim, he bought also wood from Lebanon, he bought everything ready to begin the construction of the temple and more and more to adorn his palace. So he said, if I ask for gold, if I ask for things, I will be stupid. I have more than enough. And so he asked for wisdom. And the Lord said, I will give it to you. Because what you ask is not for yourself, but for my people. And that is exactly what the Lord is asking us to do today as we come to the celebration of the Mass. To really think seriously how much we really invest our life in that kingdom of God. That kingdom that is leading us to our goal of life. And that is eternal life. And in order to understand that, Jesus gave us the parable of the hidden treasure, the parable of the power, the parable of the net. Many people say, what does the net mean? The net is the church. The net is the church thrown into the sea and collect all kinds of people. Unfortunately, it collects the good and even those who are less good. But at the end of time, at Judgment Day, we are going to have, as we say, our recompense. We are going to have our payoff. If we have invested in God, if we have selected Him to be our foundation, if we have treasured Him as the only treasure in life, we will be with Him. Unfortunately, if our decision was not to be with God or to select Him above any other thing, unfortunately, we are going to be away from Him. Remember the first commandment. When God said to Moses, tell your people to love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. He didn't say, when you have chance, when you feel up to it, 
give me what you want. No. With all. God does not want no compromise. He wants us all and completely him. And that's why the first commandment, and I hope you guys are going to say it with me, is I am your God. Continue. There shall not be another God before me. Believe me, dear people, we make God our fields. We make God our money. We make God our car. We make God all other possessions we have. Because that's human nature. She comes closer to creation and avoid the creator. And that is when we really begin our downfall. My dear people, that's why St. Paul today give us that beautiful reading. I hope, and I hope that you will follow me as we go through it and you see what St. Paul is trying to convey to us in that second reading. And that's why he said, grace to you. We know that all things work for good for those who love God. So the condition that we are going to make it is if we love God. You understand that? That's more important. That's why in the responsorial song we said, Lord, I love your commands. What did Jesus say? If you love me, keep my commands. And what is the command? Love one another as I have loved you. So that is the foundation of our faith. And that's why St. Paul said, for those who love God, and to love God is not when you feel up to it. It's not because today is all right. Or today we have nothing to do, so no go church. Or because we are on vacation. No, to love God means a commitment. God does not say, well, on Sunday the 27th of July, I am going to stop breathing. You're going, I am not going to help you breathe. He gave us the con he did us everything. God never take, a, take a, a, a vacation from us. And that's why he said, who are called according to this purpose. Now remember, we are called according to this purpose to love God because we come from whom? And who is God? Love. God is love. And that's why he continued. For those who foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed, to confirm into the image of his son. So when he created Adam, God already knows, because God is not me, I see from here to the view. God knows that the human nature was going to say no to the invitation of love. And we know that when he created Adam, he has in mind the foreshadow of Jesus, his son, who is going to take that flesh. And that's why he created us in his image. You understand now why the church is very strong about life and we are not the master of life in the womb of a mother. We are pro-life people. We are people for life. We are of the culture of life because God only creates. I cooperate with him. When you intend to have a baby and both husband and wife, because they love so much, they give to themselves, they give of themselves the gift of the child. And the child is the effect of that love. And when that love is con that, that child is conceived, God's love enters into that child and becomes his very image. 